Once I tell you how toxic polyester is for you, you'll never wear it again. Polyester and other synthetic fibers are so common in our clothing that we would never expect them to be bad for us, but they are. They're damaging our sexual health, our respiratory system, and our immune system. I'm Jared Payne, student of health and nutrition, and today I'll be going over the scientific research on synthetic fibers and their health effects. Although 67% of fibers in the textiles that we wear are synthetic, I've learned that we have pretty much no evidence on their health effects. It's almost as if we've been kept deliberately in the dark on this stuff. Nevertheless, after scouring the internet and reading over 15 papers, here is what I found. An Egyptian surgeon by the name of Ahmad Shafik produced a series of groundbreaking studies on the effects polyester has on fertility and our sexual health. The basic model of his studies was to have multiple groups of participants, either human or dog, and one group would wear polyester undergarments, one cotton or wool, and one a blend of cotton or polyester. They would wear these undergarments for a period of time, and some parameter of sexual health would be studied. In a 1992 study of his, he had 14 men wear a polyester sling for 12 months. After an average of only 140 days, all of the men had azoospermia, meaning that they had no sperm in their semen. Their testicles were smaller and had a higher temperature, and their seminiferous tubules revealed degenerative changes. Their female partners did not get pregnant. However, after an average of 157 days of not wearing the polyester sling, their sperm concentration and testicular volume and temperature were turned to normal, and all five couples who planned to become pregnant conceived. A similar study of Indonesian men, conducted in 1995 by Molok, found a similar harmful effect on sperm from wearing a polyester sling. Chapek found the same result in his 1993 study using dogs and polyester undergarments. His 1996 study showed that wearing polyester significantly reduces a man's desire to have sex and his ability to become erect and inseminate a woman. In the six months before the study, the men who were going to wear polyester had 625 mounts on a woman and 625 intromissions, erection, vaginal penetration, and ejaculation, resulting in a 1.0 intromission to mount ratio. In the second six-month period they were wearing polyester, they only had 407 mounts, so basically a 35% reduction in their sexual desire, and only 98 intromissions, an 84% reduction in the number of inseminations, resulting in a 0.24 intromission to mount ratio, which is a 76% reduction in their ability to properly have sex. This is a huge effect. In his 2007 study, Shafak had a group of pregnant female dogs wear polyester garments. In the group of seven that wore pure polyester garments, Two of them suffered from spontaneous abortions. These two dogs suffered from low serum progesterone, and to prove that there was nothing inherently wrong with these dogs, they were able to successfully have offspring during the period after their polyester garments were removed. None of the dogs of the other groups wearing different kinds of garments suffered spontaneous abortions. Chapek, in his final study on the topic in 2008, had Female dogs wore polyester garments. Seven of them wore pure polyester, and seven wore a polyester cotton blend. Of these 14 dogs, eight of them showed diminished serum progesterone in the estrus of the estrus cycle and did not conceive on mating or insemination. Five months after pants had been removed, serum progesterone of the eight dogs had normalized and they conceived. None of the dogs of the other groups wearing natural fiber garments suffered from infertility. If you would like to destroy your fertility, wear polyester. So what makes polyester such a potent disruptor of our sexual health? 
the primary factor identified in the aforementioned research is the electrostatic field effect that the textile has in our body. In the 1992 azoospermia study by Shafik, the polyester sling is found to produce an average electrostatic potential of 366 volts per square centimeter during the day and 158 volts per square centimeter at night. A similar result is found in the four other studies where he tested this. The, this electrostatic effect is caused by friction between the scrotal sac and the polyester. This makes it so that there is a negative charge on the inner surface of the polyester garment and a positive charge on the outside of the scrotal skin. This positive charge on the outside leads to the inside of the scrotal skin having a negative charge. Shafik writes that these opposite charges produce an electrostatic field extending from one aspect of the scrotum toward the other through the scrotal sac. This electrostatic field traversing the scrotal contents would disturb the testicles and or epididymis leading to diminished spermatogenesis. This same electrostatic effect can happen with the penis and the female reproductive organs. It's important to note that there is no electrostatic potential detected when undergarments of natural fibers are worn. Research on polyester undergarments seems to be the best research that we have, but there's other research that we should consider. Zimanuska and Kozlowski mention research that shows that the body's temperature is lower during sleep in linen and cotton bedding. We know that being too warm can negatively impact our sleep. The researchers also note that immunoglobulin A levels are higher when people sleep in bedding made of natural fibers compared to polyester. This suggests that polyester worsens our immune system. Furthermore, there's research showing that there's an increase in allergic reactions in people wearing synthetic clothing, and there is more natural killer cell activity in people when they sleep with polyester pajamas. So there's toxicity entering the body because of polyester that the body needs to fight off. When people sleep in cotton pajamas, there is more squealing, wax ester, and triglycerides in their sweat. Because polyester is hydrophobic, it suppresses the body's natural and seasonal increases of sebaceous activity. There was a study done measuring the total antioxidant status of participants who exercised and either wore linen or polyester. The lower someone's total antioxidant status, the more their body is experiencing oxidative stress, a state where there's too many reactive oxygen species, molecules that damage the body's cells. The study found that participants who wore polyester experienced greater oxidative stress. Overall, it seems that polyester increases toxicity and slows down detox. The Minuska and colleagues conducted an interesting study where they measured the electrical activity in forearm muscles while covered by synthetic fibers or natural fibers. They found that temporarily covering the tested forearm muscles with synthetic clothing changes the pattern in motor unit activity. This is expressed by the low frequency spontaneous activity of the muscle fibers during the state of rest, or by diminished high frequency activity of the motor units during voluntary movements. In other words, muscles in contact with synthetic fibers are more active when at rest and less active when in use. They speculate that the electric charges gathered on the polyester cloth surface, which cause an electrostatic field on the skin cloth zone, together with an increase in the skin temperature in the polyester cloth may be the cause for the observed changes. That is, increased temperature and electrostatic fields are what change the motor unit activity. This change may lead to a greater tendency to fatigue while wearing synthetic garments. Earlier we learned that synthetic clothing around the genitals changes them, and now we learn that synthetics also affect the muscles. We can only imagine what they are doing to other parts of the body, like the heart or the brain. Now, let's talk about fibers. Defmers and colleagues report that about 30% of indoor dust is composed of microplastic fibers. 
According to Deathmers, in major world cities such as Paris and London, the outdoor air contains large amounts of fibers, of which 29% and 17% respectively consisted of purely petrochemical-based plastic, i.e. synthetic, fibers. In Denmark, researchers used a breathing thermal mannequin in three apartments and determined that an average male person doing light activity would potentially inhale up to 272 micro-nanoplastics per day. It's no wonder why there can be so many synthetic fibers in the air when a single tumble dryer could be responsible for releasing 120 million synthetic microfibers into the air each year. Washing, as well as normal wear and tear, also release fibers into the air. Once inhaled, synthetic fibers can penetrate into the lung tissue and cause chronic inflammation, which is known to be a leading cause of diseases such as cancer, heart disease, asthma, and diabetes. Deathmers and colleagues report 97% of patients with lung cancer having microfibers in their lung tissue, according to one study. Research shows that workers in the synthetic textile industry are dangerously prone to suffer from interstitial lung disease, jarring of the lungs. Not only can we breathe in microfibers, but we also eat them. Through ingestion of foods and drinks, micro nanoplastics enter the gastrointestinal tract and cause intestinal inflammation, oxidative stress, increased permeability, intestinal flora disorder, and other intestinal health hazards. A study of patients with irritable bowel disease found that concentrations of fecal micro nanoplastics positively correlated with disease severity of two types of IBD, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And nylon fibers were the second most dominant fiber type detected. Other research has shown that nylon fibers were causing immune activation with predominant effects on local secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Dr. Franson Van Dyke has presented research showing that nylon microfibers inhibit the growth and development of airway organoids. Researchers at the Dutch Independent Technical Research Organization and Groningen University were able to show that a relatively high acute single dose of micro nanoplastics can pass the epithelial barrier of the lung and gut, potentially causing health effects in secondary organs, for example, the liver, the kidney, or the brain. Exposure to several of the tested micro-nanoplastics led to inflammatory responses by lung cells and damaged the integrity of the lung tissue barrier. Dr. Raymond Peters from the University of Utrecht has presented research on how synthetic fibers can penetrate lung tissue, and when they do, immune cells called macrophages will engulf them and try to break them down, but the problem is that they don't have the power. To break down microplastics, and yet they keep trying to, which causes chronic inflammation, a leading cause of diseases such as cancer, heart disease, asthma, and diabetes. Dr. Phoebe Stapleton from Rutgers University exposed pregnant rats to airborne nanoplastics, and within nine hours, nanoplastics were found in the fetuses. The same probably happens to humans. We should be especially concerned for our children less than six months old as they inhale twice the number of synthetic fibers and ingest 12 times more than adults due to their greater natural hand mouth activities and time spent crawling on the floor. It's been found that Vibrio, a type of bacteria and zoonotic protozoan parasites can latch on to microfibers and in this way be consumed by fish upon consumption of which we can get sick. There are also all kinds of toxic chemicals that synthetic textiles get treated with, like phthalates, BPA, coloring, flame retardants, etc., which could leach from the fabric and be absorbed by our skin. Finally, for my last point, let me explain to you how polyester is made. Polyester fibers are synthetic textile fibers formed from condensation polymerization of two monomers, dicarboxylic acid and terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol. 
Perithalic acid is obtained by oxidizing paraxylene and nitric acid at 200 degrees Celsius using cobalt toluate as a catalyst. Paraxylene is der derived from petroleum during polymerization. Xylene has been shown to have toxic effects. Both terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol are known carcinogens. Since the monomers are toxic, the toxicity of the polymerization product, terephthalic acid, should not be ignored. Especially because they are not completely removed from fibers, but they are trapped during the manufacturing process. These may enter the human body through the skin. Wearing polyester and other synthetics is just wearing a bunch of dried up chemicals. You wouldn't put liquid toxins on your skin, but you would put solid ones on your skin? That doesn't make much sense. I also find it quite coincidental that the chemical name for polyester is polyethylene terephthalate, phthalate being a chemical in plastic that is notorious for endocrine disruption and infertility. All in all, there are many things that should give us pause for concern regarding polyester and its effects on the body. There's definitely enough evidence to justify avoiding polyester and other synthetic fibers. You need to be checking what material your clothing is made of before you buy it or wear it. It is harder to find things made of exclusively or mostly natural fibers, but I think it's worth it. I'm always checking labels to avoid synthetics whenever I can. But they're all over the place. We in our environment are being poisoned en masse by these things, and it's got to stop. I've never heard anyone in the mainstream medical establishment talk about the dangers of synthetic fibers, which proves that we need to take our health into our own hands. It's not just what we put in the body, but also what we put on our bodies that counts. If you thought this video was valuable and would like to support me, smash that like button, subscribe, share, and tell me in the comments about your experience with synthetic fibers or your opinion on them. The more you can help my channel, the more we can help the world become healthier. Make the healthy choice, especially when you don't feel like it.